I'm not a believer in the paranormal, but I don't think that some other higher power doesn't exist. These stories are things that I have experienced and, and I can't explain, and on top of that I am a very sceptical person about a lot of these types of things. Around 2011 my parents bought an old three-storey house with a big basement in a small town in Germany close to Hameln. The house was originally built in 1850 and was used by hunters to store their kills which were mostly deer, boar and rabbits. They did the skinning, disemboweling, etc. in the basement and whenever I was down there I felt uneasy, even when I was with other people. The house was located next to a retirement home where a lot of nuns lived. The nuns always walked around the town and the forest and were very kind and had a lot of stories to tell about life. Fast forward to 2014. The retirement home was slowly becoming empty and all the nuns started to move away. Since that happened, the forest and town started to feel a lot less welcoming and that made me visit the house less than I normally would. One time when I was visiting right after the last of the nuns had left town, I went to the forest with my dog and the entire time I had a feeling of being watched. I noticed my dog was also looking around a lot more than usual and I just felt uneasy. At a certain point after walking for a few hours, my dog stopped dead in his tracks and looked with his ears pointed to an area on the path about ten metres in front of us. All his hairs were standing on end as if he were in danger. He started slowly walking to the point where he was looking and I walked to be next to him. Usually whenever he sees a wild animal he just tries to run after it, but he never reacted like this before. He was looking at the same spot as if something was there. I started to feel a cold chill and the feelings of uneasiness and being watched started to grow stronger and stronger. At that point we were now about three metres away from the spot my dog was looking at and I decided that it would be best to just walk away. I still don't know what it was my dog saw that day but it creeps me out whenever I think about it. My classmate was having a sleepover and invited me and three others over. Her home was built around 1904 and she always talked about how she sometimes heard sounds of doors opening and closing or people walking around while she was home. For fun we decided to do a Ouija board to see if anything would happen. I already knew what made the lens move while doing Ouija. Something like unregistered muscle movement, so I thought nothing special would happen. When I had arrived, everyone except one person was there, so we started getting everything ready quickly as the last friend who had yet to arrive really doesn't like anything to do with the paranormal. I suggested we place lit candles around the house as to really make the atmosphere creepy. I placed lit candles in every room of the house, closed all the windows and made some movement-sensitive objects, like a feather hanging from a fishing line and a needle attached to a piece of wool floating in water. We started the session in my friend's bedroom and nothing happened, so we started again asking if anyone was there and again nothing. But when we did it the third time we got a reply. Yes. We asked for a name. I don't remember the name but I think it was something like Nico. We asked some more questions but when we asked where are you the lens suddenly went to goodbye and we all heard someone running down the stairs. As I was the only guy, I had to be brave. I grabbed the only weapon available, which was a pair of scissors, and I opened the door to the hall. All the candles in the hall and on the stairs had gone out and were still smoking. I felt a feeling of danger in my entire body as I started to go down the stairs with the other two behind me. As we got downstairs, I saw that all the candles leading to the basement had gone out too. The basement is uncomfortably small and claustrophobic. I decided that it would be stupid to open the basement door and as we were discussing what to do the last guest arrived so we acted as if nothing had happened. I still can't explain these things and they sound like something from a horror movie but some things just can't be explained. One year ago I was messing around with my friends at night. We had been walking for hours when we spotted a dark and creepy cave. At first we were really afraid to go in, but one friend of mine encouraged us to go. 
we all switched on our flashlights and started exploring the cave. Two hours passed, but nothing interesting had happened yet, when we heard a strange noise. We turned around and pointed our flashlights to the place the noise was coming from, and we saw the creepiest thing in the world. Whatever it was, it wasn't human. It seemed to be a weird creature with shiny white eyes, and as soon as we saw it, it started crawling towards us. We all screamed and went out of the cave, panicked and terrified with what had just happened. I'm never going back in there. Who knows what could have happened if we stayed there for a bit longer. I don't even want to think about it. I have this friend I've known since kindergarten, who isn't creepy in and of herself, but she does have a creepy trait. She seems to have a strange aura or energy about her that has baffled me, her, and those close to her all her life. It seems as though people experience luck or karma based on how they treat her. She doesn't do anything to cause them harm or good fortune, it just kind of happens. She's not into witchcraft or voodoo or any of the sort so it's not like she's cursing or blessing these people either. Her parents said that when she was little, it was small things like someone would make a nasty face at her if she was being too hyper, and then they'd trip and fall on the stairs, or someone would yell at her and then bang their shin on a piece of furniture. Here are a few of the most extreme examples that she's told me about. The teacher who taught her very last high school class was incredibly harsh with her, she has ADHD and needed to kind of be allowed to learn her own way. When she listens, she tends to not make eye contact and just focuses on what the person is saying instead. This infuriated her teacher, and she would always yell at her about it in front of the class. A couple of times she almost humiliated my friend to the point of tears. This teacher had had cancer in the past, but had been in remission for almost a decade. A couple months after my friend left her class, her cancer relapsed and she ended up dying. More recently, a current co-worker of hers is apparently known for being kind of a hard-ass. One time my friend made what she called a relatively small mistake, and her co-worker came upstairs and yelled at her, saying if she ever made the same mistake again, I'm going to take you out. It pissed her off pretty bad being basically threatened like that. She even texted me about it on her break that day. A few months later, that co-worker got diagnosed with breast cancer. She just left the workplace on medical leave. She also had an ex who was verbally and psychologically abusive towards her. He had a slew of bad things happen to him that extended even beyond their breakup. Over the course of a year, he lost his job, flunked out of college, got involved with drugs, and a deer jumped out in front of his car and totaled it. Last we heard from a mutual friend, he still hasn't put his life back together, but he's working on it. On the flip side, she's had people treat her nicely and good things happen to them. Things like someone will help her out and then they find money on the ground somewhere. This actually happened to me. I found $20 on the ground after I went out of my way to bring her coffee at her job. Or if someone just is really nice to her and they get good news in the near future. Obviously, I'm not outright claiming her to be the cause of all these things, but it really is a huge coincidence. I really can't figure out what it is about her and everyone closest to her has commented on it too. Even her own parents have commented on how people really do get back what they give her. I actually think most people who know her are nicer to her on purpose because of it. She says she never does wish anything bad on the people that aren't the nicest to her. There's nothing out of the ordinary about her either. She's the most normal person you could ever imagine. She's kind, outgoing, funny, smart, etc. I honestly don't get it. But I do know one thing. I'm really happy that I've never done anything to wind up on her bad side. In 2013, I got a job as an apprentice dog groomer. I had worked at kennels before and my then sister-in-law tipped me off to a job opening to apprentice by a nice guy with tattoos whose mum owned a grooming salon. She gave him my number and he called me that same day. They didn't give me an interview, just handed me an apron and told me I was hired. Over the next three months I got to know the owner's son, Justin, all too well. 
He was friendly enough, chatty, charismatic. At first I just thought that this guy was glad to have another dude work in there because it was otherwise entirely filled with female employees. He had genuinely seemed to have taken a liking to me, and I liked him too. He told me he had spent a good amount of time in prison, but he was turning his life around. We did mostly grunt work, cleaning up dog crap and mopping, bathing the dogs and such. One night, we were closing up and everyone had gone home besides me and Justin. He asked me if I'd like to get high. I said, yeah, on occasion. He replied, I'm not talking about weed. I like to get fucked up, peeking through the blinds at 3am kind of shit. You down with that too? I told him no and he just shrugged and we went about our work. I knew at this point that he wasn't exactly the person that he showed to the public on a daily basis. There was always something dead behind his eyes. I just told myself that it was probably his prison experience and I guess in a way I was right. I eventually quit that job not long after that night. Justin's mum had this bad habit of not wanting to pay me for sticking my nose in dog shit every day and I hadn't really been trained much for grooming. I gave my notice, took my last pay and left that place behind. Fast forward to today. Reading up on news articles online, I stumbled upon a story about a few Aryan Circle members had had a beef with an old member that they were in prison with. They tied this guy up in a garage, strangled him and stabbed him to death. What I read next chilled me to the core. They took this guy's corpse to one of the attacker's mother's dog grooming salons where they dismembered his body with a reciprocating saw. I dug deeper and found it to be Susie's grooming in Hearst, Texas, where I used to work. My stomach turned. This murder and butchery had taken place shortly after I had quit, and there is only one place in that salon that you would do something so messy. The tub that I had once bathed so many dogs in, held so many conversations with Justin around. Turns out Justin's girlfriend had originally confessed to being the one to take apart the body, but she later retracted her confession and called out Justin as the one who did it, and I don't doubt that for one bit. He finally got his sentencing this year, 37 years in prison for his involvement. Goes to show you never know who someone truly is. I want to give you a little background about myself before I begin. I'm a college student and a female in my 20s. I'm living with my parents to save on rent money whilst I'm at college. My parents are on the brink of retirement so they consistently travel and spend time at a cottage they have. Nothing special, just a normal family. My parents' house backs onto a forest with a creek and on the other side is a school and a mini-mart. The house is sort of an L-shape with the TV room backing onto the forest and the kitchen at the front so you'd have to pass the TV room in order to get to the kitchen. It was almost 11pm and I was hungry. I had been hanging around the house all night. This wasn't new to me as I often worked nights at a pizza place and had just recently quit because I was returning to school. My parents were gone for the weekend visiting the cottage as usual. I went to the kitchen to fix myself a meal. Around 11 was normally when I got my dinner break at work and my body was used to it this way. I sighed to myself as I looked around for food. I decided to make a craft dinner, or KD as we call it. My only issue was all the pots were dirty. Pissed at myself for not doing them or even using the dishwasher earlier in the day, I walked over to the sink, flipped on the light switch that lit up the light above the sink. Just below that light was a window. I started washing the dishes, minding my own business, when a knock came on the window. I instantly jumped back. What the fuck? I yelled out. It was late. Who was knocking on my window? I attempted to look out the window to see who it was, but being it was night, I wasn't able to. The light I turned on caused a big glare and I couldn't see into the darkness. A hand appeared on the window and knocked again as I started to freak. I grabbed my cell phone and moved away from the window as I heard the front doorknob start to jiggle. I heard, Psst, wanna let me in? I couldn't contain my fear now. I called the cops as anyone I knew would either have used a key or tell me they were coming over. It took them seven minutes to arrive. 
By that time, whoever was harassing me had left. We assumed into the woods. I didn't feel comfortable staying alone anymore while my parents were gone.